St Albans City's season in National League South came to an end today at Twerton Park where the hopes of a playoff position were finally dashed with a 2-1 defeat against Bath City. We've got our first goal here in eight visits to Twerton Park. A strange game in. It started and finished with a penalty miss. One for them, one for us. In between time, well, I thought Bath did enough to deserve a victory. Certainly in the first half, they dominated it and they had the chances. We got level, uh, but I thought they deserved it overall. I think over on the first half they deserved it, yeah, and they got they got a, what I thought was a soft penalty which Dean's managed to save and then got a good goal but I felt we didn't really close them down and then we were fortunate to get the goal just before half time but as I say, I felt first half we were very nervous, I felt we, we didn't really get hold of the ball, it was like a hot potato, we we left Merce exposed at the top end of the pitch and never got bodies up there and uh, I felt they passed it around us, I felt second half we were by far the better team at the time, I felt we, we were starting to get right back in the game Merce had missed a really an open goal um, to put us 2-1 up and then you know to, uh, a moment of stupidity really has just cost us a game in the end. Um, lazy in terms of, of not doing the jobs properly and it's probably summed up where we are in our season. It's some of the some of the things we've done is is immature. Some of the things are done through through not being co conscious enough about how important these games are and, and unfortunately young Percy got caught in possession. He's got to put his foot through it. Any 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 defender knows that. And he's tried to dribble out, got caught in possession, and then I think it was a lazy challenge from Jamie. He, he's got to stand on his feet and shepherd him out. I think it's easy to go to ground and, and cheap penalty. Then we get an opportunity to get back in, but Sam gets the penalty, but their keeper's made a... Well, I think the keeper's already laying on the floor. I think he's obviously seen where he's taken it before. So I think overall they probably deserved it, but I felt in the second half we were really in the game, especially with 15 minutes to go. I felt they were starting to tire. I felt Kieran was starting to break from midfield. We brought on a lot of pace going forward, and I felt we was in the game to go and get something out of it. But... Unfortunately, as I say, we, uh, we were a little bit unprofessional, I felt, in that last 15 minutes. It's an interesting line-up, Ian. You decided to leave the two main wingers on the bench. You pushed Ben forward into a wide midfield position and put Tom Gardner, or kept Tom Gardner at right back. Yeah, I just wanted to be in the game, as I said before. You know, I didn't want to come here and go gang-ho and we're 2 or 3 nil out of the down before we know where we are in the game. Um, the one thing was it, you know, we, we, it was out of our hands whatever happened elsewhere, but I needed us to be in the game with sort of 20, 25 minutes to go because I felt if we are, we've got that to come off the bench and we can cause teams problems. And it looked like that, we're just going to make the substitutions with 15 minutes to go, you know, I felt, as I said, in the second half, we were starting to really push them back and bringing that pace on would have caused the big problems. I think you've seen when Sean's come on, you know, he's caused them one or two problems, then Zane's gone in the hole and got the penalty and, and, and you know, Mercer's missed the open goal and it, it looked like we could get something out of it, but as I say, you can't defend like um, school children at times and uh, we didn't defend well enough in the second half. Six games ago, we were looking forward to matches against Whitehawk and Bogner. And we thought victories then would pretty much cement our place in the playoffs and that is how it would have turned out but one win in the final six that's a dramatic collapse yeah it was and uh, i think if you look at the performances that haven't and even against hampton last week and again today it hasn't been particularly poorly i just felt felt haven't um sorry whitehawk were, were better than us on the day when they got in front i felt they caused us lots of problems um, I think you've seen what Whitehawk have done though over the last few weeks. They've not been they've not been particularly poor. They picked up some good results. Um, and Bogner for me was was the game that did it for us. I didn't think we started in the first half. I felt we were very very sloppy. Um, we managed to get something out of it in the second half in terms of performance. And we've missed the penalty in the 97th minute. Perhaps if that goes in, it'd have been slightly slightly different. But you're dead right. You know the way the, the, the collapse has happened in the last six games has been poor. You know, and I think one win out of them we'd have got got into the playoffs which is which is really disappointing and I felt did we look I don't know I'll have to think long and hard of what's gone wrong you know we, we made some really poor decisions in them last six games in terms of some of the goals we give away um, we didn't look like we had a lot of sharpness in them last six games and even at times today we didn't look like we had an energy about us we looked a little bit tired whether too many players have played too many games whether the squad wasn't strong enough in terms of a a good 15 or 16, I felt we had a good sort of 11 or 12 and, and that's not being disrespectful to the lads we on the bench but they play in different positions so did we have enough midfield players, we probably only had three maybe four midfield players all season um, and, and Solomon probably needed a bit of a rest at times, David Noble needed a rest, Kieran had his rest when he picked his ankle or his hamstring up so he came back a lot stronger and then defensively you know we've never really, I don't think really had two centre halves the whole time so in terms of, of the disappointment, yeah, it's massively disappointing now. Um, 
but I think you're, you're dead right. Somewhere along the line, it's gone wrong, um, and and we've not been good enough in the end to get over the line. You've got to say congratulations to the, the seven teams that have finished above us, because they had more about them in terms of getting over the line. And certainly, if you look at Braintree when we beat them. I think it was on Easter Monday, I mean, we had eight points clear of them. Um, they've gone and scored goals in the 90, 97th, 98th minute, 95th minute, uh, and they've then got over the line, so good luck to them, good luck to the rest of the teams that have gone it. We have, to, we have to look at ourselves in the mirror and say we've underachieved. I'm immensely proud of what the, play, proud of what the players have done, um, but I'll look back at it at the end of the season and think that we've underachieved in the end from where we was with six games to go. I was actually going to ask you how you would view the season as a whole, so it's, you would look at it as an underachievement. Um, I wouldn't say at the beginning of the season I felt with a squad that was a very, very young squad. Um, I think we've probably overachieved from, from where we finished in eighth, but I would say with six games to go that we've underachieved in the last six games. But where we finished in eighth, which is an improvement on last year, the goal tally in terms of uh, points tally, goals tally, everything's improved on last year, but you know we are a young side, we've got a hell of a lot to learn and, and you know, to try and bring some experience in to go with some of the young lads is going to be the next test for us because we need to, to see where we're going to be in terms of, of of what the budget's going to be. We need to see in terms of what players are going to be available, what players we want to keep, what players that don't want to stay because there's going to be some players there that we've already spoke to that want to see what happens in the summer. So maybe they're the things we've done wrong when we look back at it and trying to get players to sign deals for next season. Maybe we shouldn't have done that. Maybe we should have just left them and left it to the end of the season, but it was the right thing to do to try and get the players to sign. But maybe when you've offered them a new deal and they've turned it down and want to wait to see, their, their minds are already set to go elsewhere. I know Alan Dowson questioned his players the other week about that they're already signed deals for next year at other clubs. And, and I'll do the same now. We've probably had three or four that might have already got deals somewhere else. Um, but we need to sit with all the players now over the next sort of week or two. Um, and then, then I think we all need to have a bit of a break. And, uh, Seems to have been a long, hard season this year, and I don't know whether that's because of, the, of, the, of the having the games off and then having to travel on the Tuesday nights. We, we got a bit of disruption in that period where the games have then fallen away, and then we've ended up going to Bognor, um, Hungerford, and, and, and Gloucester on midweek games. I mean, they should have been played on a Saturday. So yeah, we've ended up playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, where at this stage of the season it might have been a little bit better just to go on Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. So lots of things to look at, and perhaps in the end it just wasn't good enough, um, which would be sad to say. And I think some of, some of the performances here have been outstanding. And I think if you go back to games against Dartfords and uh, Chelmsfords and East Farrocks, they've been brilliant. Willstone away was outstanding, but they've not been consistent enough. But that maybe is because we're quite a young side and we haven't got good enough experienced players throughout the team. Maybe just having David Noble and, and Ben Hurd at times is the reason why we've not done well enough, because just their experience is, is not enough. And as I said, you stages when David's not in the team or Ben was in the team the other week at Gloucester, the oldest player on the park I think was 25 years of age, which is great, um, but you know, as I say, in the, in the long term to get us over the line we've not been good enough. And it could be another tough year next year, judging by some of the teams dropping in, so experience could be the key? I think um, I've already had that in, in my own mind, there's a, there's a massive concern in terms of, of what is coming into the league, in terms of the the financial backing that some of these teams have got, and already, you know, I I, I look at it, and, and though we need to improve, it's going to be a tough, tough year. I feel with what's coming up. I mean, obviously, Billericay are coming up now. We don't know what's going to happen to Hereford, but we're Woking and, and Torquay coming down. We're not sure whether Gloucester are still going to be there or Hereford will be there, or they'll go north. But you could quite easily end up with with Dulwich, Slough. Um, so it's going to be a tough, tough league. We know that. Um, we need to recruit properly in the summer, um, but we need to make sure we've got the right balance as well because you know, people like um, Solomon and, 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 and Sam have already signed, um, so we've got a little bit of a basis there. We need to speak to some of the other players to see what they want to do. Um, probably a little bit raw at the moment in terms of where we are, but um, you know, we need to just, just see where we are from that side of it as well. So, but it's just, um, I want to thank the players, I want to thank you know, the coaching staff and I've probably got one statement to make now, which is a little bit sad from my point of view, but, but Lee's going to leave us, Lee Allinson. He's going to take up the position as manager of Biggles Wade, which is a great, great chance for him at 33 years of age to go and, and, and take that position up. Um, we spoke at length on Thursday morning. They, they rang me Thursday morning and spoke to me. They rang Lee and spoke to Lee. Um, and then we had a really good conversation in terms of 
what he's done here and how good he's been in, in, and being part of what we're trying to do. He's very much behind the youth in terms of bringing young lads through. His training sessions have been exceptional. Um, so it's going to be a massive loss to me um, in terms of not only being my son but also being my assistant manager. So that's going to be tough. Um, we've just told the players that, but you know I'm going to wish him all the best. He's been absolutely brilliant for us in the two and a half years he's been here. He's a passionate probably too passionate at times because he wants to win every battle, every dugout he wants to fight. Um, but he's got to learn from that and he'll, he'll learn and he's got to take it on the chin and he's got to have some responsibilities in terms of that. But I thank him for what he's done and, and as I say, it's just something now I've got to sit down over the sort of next seven to ten days myself and decide you know, who I need to bring in to, to support me. I need to sit down with the owners of the football club and see what they want to do first and foremost because Obviously, it's their football club, it's their decision, so you know, I need to sit with them, find out what, what we're going to have in terms of budget, find out what their, their ambitions are. Obviously, the new ground's a massive ambition in terms of how long that's going to take, and then we need to start recruiting correctly for next season and make sure when, when January or June the 30th comes around, we're ready to start training again. We've already put quite a good pre-season together, we just need to finalise one or two games. So, lots of things already been put in place, um, but as I say, today's a little bit raw, it's a bit emotional. And uh, it's quite a sad day for me because I really felt we'd done it. We, we did enough this season to get in the playoffs, and in the end, we, we, we've underachieved from that side of it. You mentioned that we finished the season six points better off than we did in the 16 17 season. But looking at the cup competitions, we went out of the county cup, albeit on penalties, to two lower league oppositions. In the trophy, we beat two or three sides that were relegated from Conference South or National League South before losing to a strong Northern side. In the FA Cup, we beat two lower league sides, then lost to a higher place side or higher league side in that. Did we achieve as much as you would have hoped for overall? I would say in the end, and this is why I said to you earlier, I think we probably overachieved because I think it showed in games, and I'll go back to Harpenden in pre-season, where we struggled to beat Harpenden, we were that poor. Um, and you go back to the Hartford game, and you go back to um, Hadley where we struggled. And then you go back to Cambridge City and, 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 and uh, Bridport, I think it was Bridport, wasn't it? So you look at all them games, and we've struggled in all them games. So for us to maybe get where we've got, we've probably overachieved. As I said, you know, we're not, we're not the finished article. At times, we're very, very good on the eye. We're very pleased, and we've got loads of pace about us. But lots of other times, we've been inconsistent. And, and some of the teams, uh, games against the, le the lesser opposition, we've been poor. I think our record against um, Bognor, Whitehawk, Hungerford... Um, Eastbourne and teams, and I'm not being disrespectful to them teams, it's poor. I think we've dropped something like 18 points out of 24. And that's the reason why we never got in the playoffs, because our record against the top six or top seven has been outstanding. Um, apart from Hemel, where we only took one point, we've taken six against Chelmsford. You know, we lost twice to Hampton, but we took three against Dartford. We took three against Haven and Wildstone, you know, they're all the sort of games you look at and you think how well we've played, but and that's the, the consistency side of where we've probably let ourselves down in the end. And, and you know, you say we, we've underachieved. I, maybe we haven't been good enough all season and we've taken up eighth position is where we deserve because we wasn't good enough in some of them comp competitions. Um, and as I said before, when we make some changes and, and we bring some, some lesser players in in terms of of, of, of the bench that needed game, especially against Hartford, we wasn't good enough on the day. We wasn't good enough against uh, Harpenden in pre-season. And I think if we go back to pre-season, David, we both spoke before the start of the season, I think it was a bit of a worry that we started the season and got six wins on the trot, but in pre-season we didn't really reach the levels where we thought we were going to be, and I think it took everybody by surprise that we won the first six games on the trot, and I think <laughs> you know, where we've ended up was probably good we've done that. But listen, We've got a very, very young team there. We've got some excellent players. We've got some really good young players who need to develop. They need to learn how to play football at the right time, at the right areas, and on the right day. And unfortunately, today we haven't done it. And in some of the past games, we haven't done it. We didn't defend properly against Bogner. And then at half time, you know, we had to just go and change one or two things, get into one or two players, and we had a response against Whitehawk, as I say, we're unfortunate when you go back to Whitehawk back in, in October that Steve King came in the, the week that we're playing them because they'd had two points, I think they scored four goals and conceded 50 goals. Steve King comes in and makes nine changes that week and then we end up drawing one all and could have quite easily got beat. So, small things in the end, but we have to take it on the chin. We have to say it's down to me as, as, as manager, um, the coaching staff and, and the management and the players. At the end, I think we've probably, from where we was with six games to go, has underachieved. Lovely. Thanks very much, Ian. Have a good summer. Thank you very much. Cheers. So there we are. Our same season has come to an end at Twerton Park with a 2-1 defeat to Bath City. We finished eighth in National League South. As we said, six points up on the previous season. We'll see you in July for the summer friendlies. And you asked me